Hello and welcome to Blockchain Gaming World with me, John Jordan. In this video, I'm going to compare the two auctions that have just been held for the F1 Delta Time game. The game's not out yet, but the developer is selling uh, these NFTs, so two NFTs have been sold. Uh, and there's some interesting comparisons, I think, that can be made um, just looking at the some of the basic data behind these two auctions. So we can see here, I'm looking at this on the OpenSea uh, marketplace. So OpenSea was the uh, website through which these uh, vehicles were sold. We see here the first one was called 111 and it sold for um, 415.9, 416 we can call it, um, wrapped ether. So wrapped ether is just a one-to-one -one, uh, version of ether which they use for uh, this marketplace. So that was about $110,000. Uh, and then the Monaco edition is the second one that's just sold um, and we sell to see that sold for um, 108 ETH, so maybe $30,000, $30, so quite a big difference, a quarter of the value. Um, but we can kind of look to see um, maybe some of the reasons um, why that's happening through the data. So um, we can just go and click on this, and this will kind of make, show us basically uh, the data, so we can see um, who it's owned by, um, what, it's, what it's sold for, and then we can look back and we can see here all the bids. So there are 47 bids, we can see oh, this is the creation, and uh, if we click on here, we can see all the bids, and these are all the people who bid, and we can see what they bid on. Okay, you know, kind of fairly standard stuff. So I've broken down this information uh, to make it a bit more uh, easy to use. So we're going to go now and switch to uh, my lovely spreadsheet. Okay, so this is a comparison of the two auctions. So we can see pretty uh, straightforwardly which is which. So the uh, blue one is the first auction. So this is a number of bids along the horizontal axes. And then we have uh, vertical axis is the price of the bid. So uh, obviously the first one went over 400 uh, ETH. So there we are, we, we can kind of see what happened. Um, and then uh, along the bottom we have the number of bids. So we can see here, you know, they were, there were I think 37 uh, bids for the first auction. Obviously a lot more for the second auction. So uh, I think 40, 47 bids um, for the second one. Obviously the trajectory is pretty uh, different as well. As soon as we get into this period of like uh, 10 bids to 20 bids, we can already see the first one is really taking off. Um, and the other interesting thing I think to see is um, the first auction, you see these very big um, jumps in the bidding um, value. So we kind of see, you know, we're under, um, if we click here, we can see. So here we're on um, 76, and then we go up to 114, and here we're on 189, and suddenly we're going up to 200, and we're almost going up like 100 ETH there. So you can kind of see there's a very different dynamic going on in terms of this auction process. Compared to the second car, we can see here, I mean, it's going up, but it's going up kind of fairly steadily. There's no... Um, big jumps going on here at all. Now this is something we might expect. So the, the first auction, people didn't really. Uh, first auction was exciting. No one really knew what to expect. Um, second auction, it's the second auction. So second auction is never as exciting, is it? Um, you could argue about whether the value of the car, in terms of the utility in the game, is any different. I mean, it is, it's not quite as good a, car, a vehicle in terms of what you can do in the game. But I don't think that really has much impact. I just got to think the. Um, in the first scenario, it was the first uh, car in the in an official F1 game to to sell, and as soon as you started seeing some of these um, jumps in bidding, then that kind of encouraged other jumps in bidding. We'll look at some of the individuals involved and, um, as well uh, to see if we can unpick that. For this one, it was much more no, no one no one raised the bidding in a way that would make other people raise the bidding. So we just kind of came through a very kind of steady increase, and even at the end, you know, there wasn't really a much going on there. So that's a, a broad comparison. Let's go in and look at a bit more detail of who was actually bidding. Okay, so let's dive into um, the spreadsheet. Uh, so this is just how I've taken the data that was from OpenSea and um, put it into a spreadsheet so it's easier to make graphs from. Um, so the important thing here we're looking at here really is these the names. So these are the, the names of the people doing the uh, bidding. This is taken from their OpenSea, um, so OpenSea kind of pulls from their wallet. And we can see here we've got the bids going on. I'm counting the number of bids. We're looking at the value in WEATH up here. Some 
putting some information about um, how much m money they've got in their wallet through looking at Etherscan and also looking at what they've got in terms of NFTs already. Um, so uh, we we'll won't really dig into that sort of stuff. That was just kind of more for my background. Um, so what we can see here, um, up here, this is like an average of all the bid increases. So the average bid increase was 17%. And, but you can see as we looked in that other graph, there wasn't really a lot going on. There wasn't really any, any massive increases in bidding. We compare that with the first um, uh, auction. We can see here the average uh, was 28%, so that doesn't seem like much more. But it, we can see here there were these. It was jumping by 50%, 60% here. So we can see there was some, these big raises, these big kind of staccato jumps. What's interesting to see is some of the quite a lot of the names are the same. Um, so a few names we're going to uh, look at. So there's Steve, uh, three, two, one. There's Robert White. There is uh, D W M. There is AAY, um, that's probably the main ones for, this is the first auction. If you look at the second auction, so many more bids in this one. Um, and if, But a few more bidders, not a vast amount of more, of more individuals bidding. Um, obviously at this point we need to say we have no idea whether um, it, people who have different uh, accounts could be the same person. I've not gone into any forensic detail looking at the wallets and um, if there's any kind of collusion going on here, this is I'm just taking this broadly at face value. But we can we can immediately see some some similar names. So the winner was Steve three two one, who was bidding for the first one. There's Robert White. Um, who else did we have? We had um, further down here. We had AAY. We had uh, DWM. So a few of the same ones, um, but but some new ones as well. Um, and let's have a look at how the kind of, um, see if we can break down um, a bit of how this process happened. So in this in this graph, what I've done is I've given every significant individual in the auction a color. Um, and then we're just looking at this kind of structure of their bids. Um, so some of them I've put as various, these are people who made a couple of bids but didn't really do very much. And then we have some more, obviously the, high, the higher up on the vertical chart you're getting, the more bids you're making. And on the horizontal chart, it's just the uh, bid kind of sequence. So you can see here, as we'd expect at the start, we have people making bids. So uh, uh, everyone has to start off at one bid, obviously, otherwise you're not on the graph. Um, and then we can see some people um, make a second bid, bid, and then some people make a third, and we can go up and up. And, up. and we can see here, um, someone made 10 bids. So if we click on that, we can see this is um, Ogasara, Ogasahara. Um, looking at their wallet and looking at their name, probably Japanese. I'm not going to make too much of that, but, but probably Japanese. <laughs> so they made 10 bids. Um, and then we have a lovely Lily, um, a significant new uh, person, made six bids. Obviously, the other thing to look at is the further we are on the horizontal line, this is, this is where the, the kind of, this is the end game. This is where the, the significant stuff is happening. Um, so we can see here that um, Ogasahara is kind of bidding you know, makes the most bids and is bidding, you know, throughout all the time, pretty much every second bid, they're making a bid. Um, there's a kind of cut off point here when we start to see, um, these are the final three bids here. So lovely Lily uh, makes six bids. Um, and then we have Robert White. So we looked at Robert White before, seven bids. And then Steve, three, two, one, the eventual winner makes eight bids. So um, what's particularly interesting, I think here is in the last, when we looked at the first auction, it was Robert White who was doing the, the, the big, aggressive 50% bids. And in fact, during that last um, auction, Robert White pretty much increased, his, uh, they increased their bid 50% um, for the majority of their bids. In this, in, they're not doing that in this case. They're making a lot of bids, but they're not really, they're, they're not ramping it up in any way. Um, and what's interesting is uh, that Robert White and Steve321 both have a lot of ETH in their wallet, so you can look look obviously through Etherscan and see what they've got in their wallet. They in fact had the same amount of ETH in their wallet as they had in the pre through the previous auction. So they had you know 300, 300 ETH. So we can kind of see here what's interesting is one, no one's doing making aggressive bidding, um, even though these people have the capacity to spend a lot of money. So obviously the assumption must be that these people, I mean Steve321 obviously wanted to win it, or they wanted to win it because because they won that, they won this car. Um, but there was no one, uh, if we assume these, these are separate people, there was no one, um, there was no bidding war started, even though these these two bid all the way up to, 
um, uh, pretty much three, almost 400 ETH um, in terms of the first case. So it's kind of interesting um, scenario there. Um, so uh, lovely Lily and uh, Ogas Sahara. Um, if you look at their wallets, they don't have as much kind of ETH in there. They have like a, a hundred, um, at one point 130, I think, um, ETH. Um, but if you, you know, while they want it, they haven't got the capacity to um, to outbid. So I think maybe that's what uh, potentially calms down the situation here. The other thing, you know, you should say this is the second auction. So the second, it's unlikely that the second auction is gonna is gonna uh, the car there is gonna the vehicle the NFT is gonna be worth more be seen as having the same value as the first one um, by any regard uh, by any you know certainly any psychological regard. And in these auction structures, it's all really about about psychology. What's also interesting to see is um, we kind of mentioned them previously. So here we have AAY. So this per this person bid in the first auction, but really didn't get very very involved here. So they just did did two two bids, uh, and we have D D W M. Um, I think it's let's have a look. Yeah, only 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 one bid, and a few uh, kind of minor things here. So there's these these two are quite interesting. So we have these two people, um, Luco, um, who may have bid in the first one. It's hard to tell. Um, and how do you pronounce that? Tilo, um, who were kind of bidding early on down here. Um, but then suddenly make bids towards the end. So there's a much more interesting um, scenario happening here in terms of this auction. Um, let's compare that with the first one. So the colours are the same. You're probably looking at the colours, but there we go. So we can see here um, what happens. Um, there's fewer bidders, so it's a bit kind of easy to see. And we can kind of see there are, um, again, there are some people who are bidding a lot. So the DWM bids nine, bid nine, makes nine bids. Um, but we can see towards the end, it's basically Robert White is bidding against Steve three two one. So they're making their bids. Then interestingly, one a person, the person who wins the first uh, card is just a random person who just makes their first bid and 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 kind of takes it from these two who have been bidding up all the way along. Um, there's none of this kind of scenario where it says so no one comes in at the last minute and bids um, to, to win the auction. But there's not this kind of. Uh, Robert White and um, Steve 321 don't don't have the same um, kind of aggressive bidding pattern uh, that goes on for a long period of time. So so they, they right at the end they do make Robert White, Robert White makes a second to last bid and then Steve 321 makes the final bid. So there is a little bit of that, but there's nothing like the same kind of um, passion or kind of aggression going on here. And as we say, kind of A A A W A A A Y um, in the first case makes four bids, uh, five bids even, and then um, DWM makes makes nine bids, but they for some whatever reason um, they don't really they're not really attracted to this to this new kind of car. Um, so why 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 didn't the uh, car the second car the Monaco car sell as much as the first car? Well, we can just see from the patterns. Really, at no stage um, of, of this auction was there anyone trying to drive this kind of scenario. And you can understand at the beginning, you know, it makes sense. There's going to be more people interested because the first auction picked up quite a lot of press. So more people are going to be chancing their arm. Most people don't have 100, 200 ETH lying around in their wallet that they want to spend a car on, that they want to buy an NFT with. So you can understand that it takes off, takes longer to, to take off. But no, no one in, at this kind of stage, when it's getting up to, you know, 75, 50, 75 ETH, no, no one makes the big, big bid to take it up, up through the hundreds at a, at a kind of um, fast pace. Um, the other thing to point out is, is these auctions were held over three days, and uh, when it got to the end point, if you made a bid, then that pushed the um, pushed the timer out another five minutes. But we don't really see uh, see any kind of aggressive stuff happening here, um, and I think that's kind of a good point. You know, I'm not sure that the the uh, the developers of of uh, F1 Delta Time particularly are surprised by this result. I mean, I think they were surprised by the first result. I think everyone was surprised that someone would spend $110,000 or nominal $110,000. Um, Value of cryptocurrency on something. Um, this is probably more what we expect. You know, it's still thirty-three thousand dollars on something that um, arguably would be hard to resell for <laughs> that value. Um, uh, but I guess what's interesting is at, at this point, people at the top of this kind of uh, auction, people were putting more um, ETH into their wallets in order to bid, in order to bid up what's going on. In this case, that's not happening. People aren't even bidding to anything like. Um, the maximum of their of their wallet. So they're just um, from an excitement level. The second auction 
didn't get close to driving the same amount of excitement. Because you only need, obviously, in this case, you only really need two people to drive this up. This is what happened here. This was Robert White and Steve321 driving the price up. Um, in this case, Robert White and Steve321 were both in the auction, but uh, neither of them cared enough to try and really force the same scenario as happened um, in the first auction. So there we go. Um, I wouldn't say a damp squib, but I was kind of expecting, uh, maybe foolishly, maybe with a with a kind of data head on, I was expecting something a bit more interesting to happen at some point, <laughs> rather than this very steady curve. But there we go. Um, I guess what's interesting now is to see um, how the game turns out. So the F1 Delta Time game is not uh, released yet. Um, and I guess what's also interesting to see is 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 can these uh, very high valuations of of these NFTs at any point um, be uh, not kind of surpassed, but it, would anyone ever be interested in, in buying these NFTs off the people who own them at anything like this level? So, so if this one, if this first car, the one one one, was put up for auction, would anyone bid five hundred ETH on it? I guess. Um, I think from this kind of trajectory, we're probably thinking um, no, that the first auction system worked really well and people overpaid for um, for the item, and you would argue that um, in the second case there was just not enough excitement for the the way in which auction systems to feed into human psychology and drive up prices, you know, it just didn't work in the same way. So, so probably this one you could argue is slightly underpriced. Or this one's underpriced and this one's overpriced. I guess so there's some sort of sweet spot in the middle there. But um, interesting to look at um, what's going on. Obviously, great with blockchain to um, get all this data. We have to be a bit careful um, in how we draw conclusions from the data because the data is, is more complicated um, than than the basic numbers I'm looking at. So we try and bear that in. Um, in regard so anyway thanks for watching the video so uh, blockchain gaming world is all about the world of blockchain games i like data so occasionally i, I go off and do some data analysis uh, but generally we play blockchain games um, and, and talk about those so if you're into that sort of thing please do subscribe but thanks for listening and hope to see you again soon